Hello people, welcome back to another video tutorial. In this opportunity we are going to recreate using Scratch software one of the most classic video games ever. I'm talking about Pong game. Actually, Pong is one of the first computer games that ever created. It's just like a tennis-like game and when you control control by two human players and the components of this game are just simply two paddles and a ball this game is from 1972 and today by using the scratch software we are going to use simple algorithms to recreate this fun multiplayer game so Hands on and let's go. Okay. In the first stage, as usual and as always, we are going to setting up the stage, the sprites, and some basic stuff for this video game. Remember, we're using in these episodes of Scratch our online accounts so I'm logging in and don't forget if you want to check anytime your stuff don't forget to click on my stuff menu or mis cosas okay let's start and here we go I'm going to switch the language as always and in this opportunity, I'm going to erase the cat using the scissors on the upper menu. Okay. Clicking on the stage, in this opportunity, we are not going to draw a stage. We are going to upload an image that we will use as a stage. As you can watch in the previous minutes, I'm setting up some similar punk stage. The empty stage is not needed anymore, so I'm going to only use this single image in order to start creating my punk field and setting up the name. And later in the sprite section, we are going to use some pre-designed sprites in this opportunity we are going to select the soccer ball okay it's it's loading here we go now we have the ball one of the advantages of using pre-designed elements in scratch it's that all these elements are already centered. Don't forget the previous tips on the episode one. Don't forget always to center elements. Okay. And for the next element, remember, we are going to create the first paddle or the object the player will move in order to avoid that the opposite player scores and for this paddle creation we are going to use a simple rectangle okay I'm drawing my rectangle and the next step don't forget is always to center my element okay here we go return to scripts okay I have a bigger paddle let's shrink that paddle a few more clicks okay and okay let's shrink the ball also here we go now don't forget to always set up names for any sprites you have in your video game or in your program in this case, I'm going to set up the name as player1 and using the stamp and clicking on the player1, I'm going to clone the sprite. As you can see, the name player2 is automatically selected. 
The only thing I need to do is, if you want, is it's up to you. You can switch or change the color of your paddle. In this opportunity, we are going to select this kind of pink color. And finally, we are going to create a new sprite because we need to set up the goals. And for the goals, we only need a simple vertical line. We are going to click the white color and press, pressing and holding shift, you can create an exact vertical line. Let's try to center this up. Okay, could be kind of difficult, but don't worry. And move to one of the opposite sides and because we are creating the goal for the player one the sprite name for this sprite will be goal one using the stamp again we clone we have goal two already centered already labeled and that's it for this first opportunity, we have all the elements already prepared. Let's organize a little and the first stage is over. Let's continue. For this new stage, it's algorithm time. So let's begin. Click on the first paddle and set up the first event when green flag clicked and don't forget that the second step is to set up the coordinates for our paddle. This logical block automatically selects the coordinate and using the forever loop, inside this forever loop, we are going to set up the first conditional loop. As we did in the hardest game ever episode, we are going to establish the keys player we use in order to move the paddle. But in this time, instead of set up steps, we are going to use this block change y by and set up the number. If you need to move the paddle faster, just increase the number or increase the value. Clicking on the stamp, we are going to clone this part of the algorithm. Don't forget to set up always behind or below the previous conditional. And clicking in down arrow, we are going to establish in this opportunity minus 10 or the number you decide in previous minutes. We are going to do the same stuff with the second paddle when green flag clicked and the previous coordinate. Okay, but in this opportunity, we are going to clone from the forever loop, we are going to clone and scratch letters clone or copy only by using drag and drop options. As you can see in the video, using dragging and drop options, I clone the algorithm part. And the only thing I need to do is to switch the keys the second player will use. In this opportunity, the second player will move up the paddle using the W key. And we can move, or the player will move the paddle down using the S button. Okay, I'm clicking on the flag and using my keyboard and you can do the same thing. You can test the independent move of every paddle in your game. So let's stop and now let's focus on the ball. First, let's set up the starting event when green flag clicked and because we need in this opportunity 
to set up the ball at the right center of our screen, we are going to set up the coordinates to zero on X axis and zero in Y axis. Later, using as usual, the forever loop, we are going to move our ball in an infinite loop using the move logical block. The steps you can increase or decrease if you need that your ball moves faster. But in this opportunity, we are going to use this particular logical block. If on edge bounds, let's try. So as you can see, the ball moves on an infinite loop and anytime the ball or the sprite touches any border or any edge, the ball will bounce. But in order to move or in order to set up the ball to bounce against the paddles, we are going to use a conditional loop and if this ball touches, in this case, the player one, we need to be or to be very focused because the ball will move X quantity of, of steps and the ball needs to point in the opposite direction according to the player. If the ball touches the player one, the ball needs to move in the opposite direction. In this opportunity, the ball will move to the left and duplicating or cloning this part of the algorithm, we are going to move on the right direction because we are going to set up the ball behavior for the opposite player and testing this part of the algorithm. Now you can see that our ball anytime touches any player, the ball bounces in the opposite direction. Okay. In order to finish and to give more, uh, more dynamic movement to our ball, we are going to use these logical blocks turn X degrees. As a default number, we select 15 degrees, but using an operator, this kind of operator, pick random between one to 15 degrees, we are telling the ball that automatically touches the players set up a random degree between, as, as I said, one to 15. Okay, let's try. Now you can see that the ball changes its movement or his movement according to random positions or random bounces given by the paddles. Okay? In this testing movement, you can see that this better option of this Pong simulation goes too easy. So let's add another turn logical block and set up a different movement or a similar one but in a different direction and using these logical blocks you can set up different movements to this ball. Okay, the final part of or the final stage of this punk recreation will be to set up the scoreboard and the other stuff. So, here we go. Congratulations, now you reach the final stage of this punk simulation. In this opportunity, we are going to set up some final adjustments for our game. For example, in the previous stage, 
we watch or we saw that our game was kinda easy. So increasing some values now you can see that our ball goes faster and now you can set up a harder or a more exciting game. So let's continue. For the scoreboard, we are going to use the data logical blocks and we are going to create a new variable called points player one. Don't forget that scratch in scratch you can select between three different variable options. But in this opportunity, we are going to select the second. You can switch between options only double clicking on the variable object. And we need also a second variable called points player two. And using control, we are going to establish or we are going to use a new conditional loop but in this time if our ball touches the goal in this case goal one we are going to change the points focus on this the points for the player two because player two needs to score on players one goal cloning the conditional loop and switching for goal two, we are going on the opposite way. If the ball touches the goal two, the points will score on player one scoreboard. In addition to that, we need to establish two more variables called set points to zero. Let's test and let's see. Okay, I'm checking, but something weird happened. As you can see, sometimes the points goes on double and that goes some disadvantages for the player or for the players, but that tiny little problem has solution. The only thing we need to do is that any time the ball touches any goals, let's move the ball to the neutral position. That means let's send the ball to the X and Y axis neutral. That means zero in vote. And now you can see that you have a fully functional pawn game. Now just pick up some friends and let's have fun together with this exciting and fun simulation game. Thank you so much for watching and see you people on the next episode. Bye bye!